Welcome back to the SBP Podcast, Mobile Filmmaking. I'm your host, Susie Botello, and you're listening to episode 181. We are Fade Into Film. Hey, so we're back on the podcast after a really awesome film festival. The International Mobile Film Festival took place in San Diego, April 26th through the 28th. And we met a lot of fantastic people, a lot of wonderful, bright humans who happen to love storytelling and shared their movies shot with smartphone cameras. So uh, not going to talk about that right now. We're going to talk about that uh, probably next week with the team uh, but for this episode this is the version that we recorded during the film festival but before we do that i got to give a big shout out to aaron naboos for recording uh with his iphone uh the entire session and that's what you're about to listen to it's a little echoey it's in a room it's not in our private studios at home so there is a little difference in the sound but what's more important is the content. It's the conversation and the discussion we had with everyone who attended the film festival this year. So if you're ready, let's go. Welcome to the SBP Podcast Mobile Filmmaking at the International Mobile Film Festival. Woo! It's live. Yeah, we're live. So we, uh, I'm your host, Susie Botello, and <laughs> here with me today, a miracle has happened. <laughs> we have our three Fade Into Film panelists. We have Joey Min. Hello. We have Levi Austin Powers. No, Morris. Oh, I like Levi Austin, Austin Morris. Yes. <laughs> And we have Ryan McDonald. Hey, everybody, how's it going? Hey, when so, a handsome man. <laughs> so today we have a great show planned out for you, which we just rehearsed about three minutes ago, right? Uh, we, we at least have some topics that we're going to talk about. Uh, there we go. Yeah. There we go. There we go. So we're going to be discussing crowdfunding. We're going to be talking about always learning. <laughs> and we're going to be talking about always practicing and executing. Yes. yes. And we're going to talk about my dog. No, we're not. <laughs> Tico. Tico. T I K O. Uh, so listen, uh, I'm glad. I just have to say this. It's a real pleasure and an honor. I know everybody in the audience, because I just asked, is listening to our podcast. So it's really nice to be able to see you when I speak with you here, but also when we keep recording episodes of the SBP Podcast Mobile Filmmaking online, we will know you. We will see your faces as we're speaking. Got it, guys? I'll be speaking to each and every yeah. one of you next time we record. <laughs> <That's what laughs> <Yes. I said. laughs> So uh, without further ado, I just want to start off really quick by thanking Joey for his wonderful action filmmaking smartphone. Uh, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. And Levi Austin Morris has been, <laughs> I said it right, yeah. uh, he is one of our judges for the film festival. Mm -hmm. And I thank you for coming down to do this crazy recording that we're going to do. Absolutely. Thank nice. you. Nice. And also for watching two feature films. Yeah. And then they were fantastic. Yeah. So, yeah. And Ryan McDonald is uh, actually has a film in the film festival. Mm -hmm. And he brought do, his, yeah. his two little girls that are also filmmakers. They are 11 and 8. 11 and 8, yeah. 11 and yeah. 8 years old, and they're also here. Alyssa and Sophie. So, and um, well, let's get down to business, guys. Ching, 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 ching. I don't know. Uh, yes. 
Sorry. Move on for a moment. Yeah. <laughs> so, so do we? I know you've been in San Diego before. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, what did you think about the sunshine that we had? The sun came out for us. I mean, it's been. It's a lot chillier than I expected. Yeah. Like, you know, I was like, okay, it's San Diego, it's probably, you know, palm trees and it's hot and it's a beach or some shit. And I come here and it's like, wow, it's fucking freezing. It's Jersey weather. <laughs> yeah. It's it's Jersey weather. You're right next to the ocean. Well, yeah. It might be, it actually, I think that right now it's chillier here than in Jersey. I actually, yeah, it is. Yeah. It See, is. I know the thing. And now you know when we complain about the cold. Yeah, I guess we're serious. Yeah, I mean, you're talking yeah. about like, yeah, yeah. that. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. The ocean water's cold, too. I went out there. Yeah. 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 It's cold. But yeah. it's cold and the sun is out, and that's real mm -hmm. weird Confused. for me. Yeah, yeah. No, the there's, there's no heat. It's the Pacific. <laughs> it's always cold in the yeah. Pacific, when especially if you're used to the other side. But I'm right next to the Atlantic. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's, you know. It is what it is. Yes. It is what it is. Uh, Ryan, <laughs> Ryan and Levi have <laughs> Ryan and Levi have met before in our film festival a few years ago, uh, but we've never met Joey in person, and we are not at all disappointed. We're very pleased. We're happy. I, I, I act exactly the same. Yeah. We were going to come every other week. Yeah. This is exactly me. Um, I'd like to start off with uh, something that I think our audience here and our listeners are gonna appreciate. We're gonna talk about crowdfunding. Sure. And uh, the expert on crowdfunding, at this table at least, would be Levi. And so Levi, would you explain a little bit about crowdfunding? And first of all, talk about why I'm even insisting that you discuss this topic. Because something you did last year for your feature film paralysis was really awesome. And you learned a lot from that process, right? Sure, yeah. I mean, uh, yes, I, I guess you said specifically, like, I know why I was going to talk about it, but what, what did you yeah. want? Like, what were you Well, because I, the reason, the reason, <laughs> my implication yes. was that because you did such a great job with your crowdfunding sure. campaign for Paralysis, which is a mobile feature film, mm -hmm. um, I thought that this would be ideal as opposed to getting, you know, some, some person from Netflix who made a Marvel movie sure. that talks about crowdfunding because that's not even going yeah. to happen. Yeah, sure. So yeah, I mean crowdfunding is, uh, it's a bitch, I'm going to be honest. It is it is a very difficult thing to do. Um, but for us, we were, uh, we did a feature and we knew that we weren't going to have the funds to do it because making a feature is expensive. Like, I've done many short films prior to that and I just paid for it out of my own pocket. Um, and I knew going into paralysis that we needed more equipment. We needed, you know, uh, more people. We were feeding our people and it wasn't just pizza, you know? Nice. So like, like nice. we needed uh, an actual budget. Yes. Um, and so uh, we did all the pre-production to figure out roughly what we could shoot the film on. Um, and we realized it would be, well, I, I also, uh, there's a number of different crowdfunding websites or uh, sites like Indiegogo, uh, Kickstarter, uh, Seed and Spark, which is the one that we used, and uh, GoFundMe. Like, there's a bunch of different crowdfunding websites. Um, and I chose Seed and Spark. Uh, they also have a lot of really fantastic tutorials online. So, if anybody is considering crowdfunding, I do recommend going on YouTube and looking up Seed and Spark's tutorials on how to make an effective. Uh, and successful crowdfunding uh, campaign. Uh, and so I deep dove into research so that I could figure out uh, how to create the most effective one. Because um, I think a lot of times when you are doing crowdfunding, you get those pitch videos that are just, I'm the director of this film, this is what I'm doing. And it's just kind of talking at you. It becomes kind of generic. Mo and monotonous. And, and like, monotonous. and you want to excite the people to give you their money. So, you know, so, yeah. Um, so, like, and I think another thing that a lot of people do wrong crowdfunding, and they talk about it a little bit in the Seed and Spark tutorials, is, um, you're just like nobody really knows what your project is so like if you're just making a project and slapping the name of your film on it that is not as exciting as something that is like more engaging or fun or unique or personal for that uh is the, it, the, is it the people more like, are, a little bit like bringing the humanity side of it yeah so so one of the things that we did that was incredibly successful for our campaign because our film paralysis is about a woman who is suffering from sleep paralysis and there's uh 
sleep paralysis demon that visits her in the night. And um, so uh, we went to the 99 cent store and bought these little plush dolls. And then we took uh, Sharpies and permanent markers and made them creepy little hag. Yeah. Uh, so the, the old hag was our demon. And so we made little creepy hag dolls out of them. And uh, one of the, to make it more personal, anybody who contributed a certain amount, we would write just a very short little story of how that doll came to haunt that person. Um, and we ended up like, I think in our campaign, we like 13 to 15 of them, we ended up having to make and sell off to, and it cost me a dollar to make those, you know? So it was like super cheap way to get people interested. It's like a fun thing for them. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, I, I think like making your perks, if you're gonna do the perks uh, more personal, and not, not even tangible things. Like there are fun things that you can do to engage your audience. Because if you do, like it's, 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 it costs money to sell yeah. these things or to, well, what was, to send like, these things. So let's build a little sure. bit of a map. Okay. Right? So you would start out, you have your project that you want to get funded, yeah. right? And then once you have that in mind and you've solidified that in some way, right? Mm -hmm. Because that, that helps you set goals, right? So when you when you did that, you go about you begin, and you don't just begin with marketing dolls and things no. like that. But we had we had production meetings where we came together and we discussed things that would not cost us money, um, that that were creative ways to engage people. Um, and what like one of the things that we ended up doing was we did a, a hashtag challenge to come up with sort of the slogan for our film. And so uh, a number of people sent in their hashtag, and we did end up sending off like a, a $15 um, gift card to Subway, to the winner. Um, so it's not a lot of money, but a lot of people are really excited to engage in that way. So they, they know the synopsis of the film, and that's it. And so they're, they're trying to come up with a hashtag. And our so when you get into the account, mm -hmm. right, into the profile, the link mm -hmm. that they open when, we created a Google Drive where they could go and they could submit their thing. And it was just a very easy cool. thing. Um, and the winning hashtag for us was Sweet Screams, which has become the hashtag for our film. It became the slogan for our film. Um, and it appears in all of our marketing. Um, and so it's you just- You have to write some kind of a copy or something like that that's enticing to even get people to look further because there's so many of these things out there, right? On the Well, I, I, what do you mean? So, okay. so. Let's say I'm an idiot. Mm -hmm. Don't laugh. <laughs> okay, laugh. Uh, but let's say I'm an idiot, and I, I'm I'm hearing for the first time that there's this thing called crowdfunding, yeah. right? So I go there and I I look at this website and I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed mm -hmm. with information and tutorials and things like that, and I'm just like I'm just trying to get funding for my little film or sure. my big film or my whatever project, right? So you. First thing, you know, what what is your project called? Well, yeah, it's this, but maybe maybe that doesn't have to be the title, the heading, you know, the enticing heading title for this campaign because mm -hmm. it's it is kind of a campaign, right? Camp crowdfunding. Oh, it's, absolutely. And then you have to add a description and you have to somehow identify yourself, right? But wouldn't at that point mean that you haven't thought about your project? Yeah, like because the crowdfunding should be the last thing. Yes, you should. Okay, have that's your, a good point. Yeah, yeah. Like, like you know, you you need to know what your like what yeah. your project is. You need to know like you, you need to have your script ready. Like we had everything was prepared. We were just at that point, and again, I I researched which. Um, uh, platform I wanted to use, yeah. and I and I, uh, Seed and Spark is fantastic with their tutorials. Um, okay. So I, I do recommend if you are going to crowdfund, watch those tutorials. Um, they also have to approve you before you can even go live. They're not going to allow you to go live until they think you could be successful. Um, and so there were a few things that we did have to change. Um, and one of the things that we were a little upset about was that. Um, we had shot a concept trailer, and then we had our pitch video, and we kept our pitch video engaging. We kept it funny, we kept it succinct, and we had little fun uh, things in the video. Um, but they wanted it shorter, so they were like, cut the pitch video, just do the talking heads. And I was like, I'm not cool with that. So I, I ended up cutting just a very short part of our pitch into it, and we released our concept trailer the day before we went live, so that people could see what we could do Good. prior to actually going live with the campaign. So we're like, this is, look at what we can do. And then the next day we were like, by the way, we're looking for funding. Um, and, and, and like, 
it, it didn't take very long. Like we raised the money pretty quick. Yeah. And we exceeded our money, which was great. And, nice. and, and the thing is we also, the, the thing that I recommend that Seed and Spark also recommends is splitting your campaign. Because it's a lot to be upfront to say, we need $30,000. But if you figure out exactly what you need for production first, and you have a production campaign first, and you say in your pitch, we will be having a post-production expense campaign later, but right now we're just raising the production campaign funds. Um, it, it makes it less intimidating for people who are considering contributing. So, so we raised, the goal was $9,000 for the first campaign. We raised, I think, just under 11,000. And then the second campaign was, and we shot the film at $17,000. Um, the, the second campaign, the goal was 5,500, and we raised almost 7,500. So, so we, we exceeded on both, which was great, because then that was less stressful for us. Um, I will say something, and this is like off the cuff, because right now I am like, and I don't, I think I can share this, so I'm going to share this. We got a distribution deal, which is very exciting. However, um, there are costs with distribution, and that is something that I did not consider before. So in the future, if I do crowdfunding, I will be considering that in uh, raising money, uh, because it ends up being quite a bit more money. Um, so keep that in mind if you are considering. So you want to put your budget together. For yeah, what yeah, yeah. You need. Like be, just be aware of where all the expenses are going to be. Yes. Um, and plan ahead for that, yeah. yeah. Awesome. But you wouldn't know all of that until you actually- Exactly, it was in, like, and it's something that like for this one now, I'm like, oh, okay, so in the future, I'm, I know like if I'm gonna crowdfund again, which I don't want to, I'd like to find investors, so if you are interested <laughs> in investing in an indie filmmaker, um, I'm very good. <laughs> but, but that's still pretty awesome though, Levi, because you, you, you exceeded your expectations yeah. with it. Yeah, and, and that, with that uh, exceeded um, financing, we were able to submit to more film festivals. Like, yeah. like, and and it, it worked well for us. You know, like that's the route that we chose to do was the festival route. Um, and we were in, I think, fifteen festivals, and we won ten awards. So it was like it, it felt good and validating as a filmmaker to have that. And now it's like, let's go yeah. to the next one. <laughs> you know, like yeah, yeah. So, yeah. that's pretty good. Yeah. So, um, Joey. Yes. Let's talk about that. Well, actually, yeah. Ryan, let's talk about the uh, the always learning, the, the always learning the <laughs> Ryan thing. Oh, the Ryan thing. Um, uh, thank you, by the way, for all the insight on yeah. the on the crowdfunding. It's certainly been something I want to pick your brain about. Yeah. So, um, that's something that I haven't tried yet. Is crowdfunding. So Just, it is a full time yeah. job. So you have a lot of work that you could show people. I'm sure people will be like, yo, yeah, this guy, yeah, you yeah, like, yeah. 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 definitely easier for you. No, I appreciate that. Um, so, what I want to chat about is it's kind of like always learning. And I, I want to preface this by saying that I can, I probably come off as pretty pretentious sometimes around saying, I, when I was, so, when I was younger, I really wanted to go to film school. And in Utah, at the time that I was growing up, uh, around the early 2000s, they didn't have film school in college. And so I knew already that I had to move out of that I had to move out of state. And I did, and I did go to film school at a university. And I'm very proud of that. But I realized at the same time, it sounds massively pretentious when I say it every time. Um, so I want everybody to know that Judge Dredd with Sylvester Stallone is one of my favorite films still. And also, I'll throw in Batman and Robin by Joel Schumacher every no. once in a while, just no. as a kid. So no. I'll, no. I'll, I'll get drunk at a party and be like, you know what? <laughs> yeah. I'm with it. I'll get drunk at a party and be like, Speed 2 is what we're watching. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, right yeah. Right now. So, all being said, uh, art, film, or not, like I still enjoy a good commercial blockbuster or failure kind of thing like that. But uh, one of the things that I, for me, is that is that uh, very often times I, I find myself still consuming um, learning material around medium itself. And in your in your workshop earlier, you were mentioning Buster Keaton and Charlie Chaplin, and like it's like you were going back again to to those guys. And there's a there's a there's a moment where it's like we sometimes I'll be speaking with the with the you know I'm on set. Somebody's directing, and it's kind of like they don't really have a pitch for like who is inspiring this next shot, what we're doing next. And I find sometimes they're not watching enough movies. Mm -hmm. They're really just not consuming enough yeah. material. They're not listening to enough interviews. And we live in an era where we have 
so many YouTube videos where uh, the Matt Damons and Ben Athens are talking about how they made good uh, Good Will Hunting or why they did it and why they wrote the monologues. Well, a while back, remember HBO used to have, you know, those. They had the Green Lantern yeah. Project, yeah. And, yeah. and the, yeah. the making of projects as well. Yeah, they, really, yeah. Really yeah, awesome. I used to record them. Yeah, on the me too. But <laughs> yeah. we won't. They um, DVD and featurettes and shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Remember when DVD said production notes? That was that. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Digitally flip through. And so I find myself consuming that type of material. And, and the, the, the value that I find in there is that is you find a lot of tricks that they are doing. And if you're and if you're simply just moving forward and you're not watching enough of the of the the old films or the new films, or really just digesting every trick that they're telling you. Uh, you're going to miss some of the bigger, bigger pieces. Um, here's an example: Tenant, which I still love. I don't care. If you I love it. I, love I don't it. care if you hear the dialogue. Okay. I know when I go into Chris Nolan flick, it's going to be a little bit muffled. Mm. But, <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of the, a lot of the magic in it is, is just basically reversing the footage, like the, mm. the, the picking up of things is that that's. That goes all the way back to uh, when Malaise was doing it. Mm -hmm. Yes, like it's, exactly. It's just simply reversing the footage, and that's and that's that's a, and it's such a trick that that uh, people are overlooking sometimes. And so, when um, we talk about like practical effects compared to like CGI effects, it's like, but if we just look at how they did it practically, and it doesn't have to be the thing, the car, the, like by John Carpenter kind of practical effect, but it's simply just the the way that uh, one shot connects to in the next shot. I mean, and we've talked. Sorry, I yeah, interrupt, but like we talked a little bit in the podcast before, and you mentioned that like there's a trend on TikTok of like how to do a transition. Yeah, how to like, transition. This is literally <laughs> something that you can see in an old movie. It's called yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's called yeah. 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 Well, within, the context, yeah. within the context of today, we got to keep remembering that there's different generations, and where they're absorbing that yeah. to learn from is a different medium. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. And so like. I'm not as I'm not on TikTok, so I'm not as irritated about TikTok. But uh, but I, the way I, the way I see it is that you have a generation of people who, whether they know it or not, are editing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're doing basic edits where they have like where they're doing this like T-shirt thingy yeah. pull, and all of a sudden it pops into like they're wearing like a swimsuit or something like that. And <laughs> yes. It's, and it, yeah, that's, that's, like, that's a hundred year old trick. Yeah. And yeah. then, but then as as uh, but then as you were saying. Um, around like action editing and things like that. Like some people might do something completely different and it looks CGI and it looks mm -hmm. fake and it looks crap. It's like, mm -hmm. dude, the, the mastery is already there. Yeah. If yeah. we just look backwards yeah. into it. Yeah. And so um, I recently read the uh, the autobiography by George Malays and I and it was like the way that he found the that trick of editing. So you know, nowadays we record something and we see it instantly. But when he records something, he can't even go process it himself. He has to ship it off to go be processed. Right. So he's waiting like weeks, right? Yeah. So he's like spinning the camera, was like recording downtown. And this is the time when it, that was very magical to record downtown because you didn't see uh, photos of, of things around. Like, um, you couldn't just Google it or whatever, right? Or take right. a picture of it and tell you what plant it is. So he's, he's, so, he's, so he's doing this, and then it jammed on him. And he was like, oh, crap. And so he restarted it, and he went like this. Now. He ships it out. For the We're listeners in audio. Oh, We're sorry, I'm doing a little spinny yeah. hand thing here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, all right, all right. the magic trick is this. <laughs> um, but he ships it out, and when he gets it back, he sees that like there's a jump cut moment, which had not been in, invented yet. Yeah. It's time. Sorry, there's some air quotes in there. Um, but like there's a jump cut moment from the people who, who right before the camera jam to the next spot. Well, now there's a plus, and everybody magically changed. And that's when he was like, wait a second. That's, yeah. that's a trick. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's a trick there in the edit, and this is before, this is before like the Russians figured out like, montage and things like that. Like, yes. And so, so it's it's like, but I'm reading it though. So like a person who's graduate film school who's made excellent short films and feature film, and I'm still blown away that that was like how he mm -hmm. figured that out. Right. And there are times when we're on set and we're we're talking about something like just. Every once in a while, it's nice to be like, hey, this is the Citizen Kane shot. And just yeah. somebody on yeah. set knows what you're talking about for a second <laughs> kind of thing. But um, there are other times where someone wants to make a horror film, and if I ask them, what are your influences? If I read the script and I can't find it, and I ask them and they don't know, it's I get weary about the project. But when I'm reading it, I'm like, dude, this is De Palma right here, and this is Hitchcock right here. It's like I'm all on board, and that person says, oh, yeah, well, please. Because De Palma, as we know, 
he he knows he's he's understood the language of cinema. He's he's watched the Hitchcockian films. He's he's looked at it way back. And in every even if, and I think that as any young person who wants to get into filmmaking, every person that you love who's doing it, if you just took a second, they love somebody else who did it. That's right. They, they they're inspired by something else, and you just go further deep down the rabbit hole of a thing. Um, and that's that's my that's my. Career. And that's how you're that's, always that's learning. My, that's my right? you know the, right. the blade is on fire. I'm on a horse. I'm running yeah. towards the battle. Like that's right. that, that's my cry. Because that's my war cry. Yeah, you, you go stay. back in time. Yeah. You go back in time. You see the most distilled version of whatever it is that you're trying to do. So like, oh, then you can kind of see through all of the variations that preceded it. You know, I get it. Exactly. I mean, that's, that's so funny it's, how it's like, good to diversify the sources that you're you're using to learn from. Mm -hmm. and even if you're just, I mean, if you're passionate, you're naturally gravitating towards things like that. Uh, but you have to also, we're in, in, a, in a place at this time when media is coming at you from all different angles. But it's good to keep that in mind that, hey, I need to, I know what I want. I know what I'm looking for. And I'm looking to enhance and to better my filmmaking. And it's not gonna happen overnight and it's good for me to find these ways and look in different mediums. Look at the Google, uh, I'm, I'm not sure about TikTok, but you know, uh, whatever. Uh, go to YouTube, uh, listen to podcasts, you know, and read books. Watch old movies. Watch old movies. Watch old movies, yeah. Well, and now, like, podcasting is the new blog, in a sense. And yeah. so, and so many filmmakers and actors now doing are on a podcast. Like right now. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and so what I do through my mundane task, yeah, exactly. Right now. Uh, when I'm mowing the lawn or I'm washing the dishes, something like that, like I'm listening to somebody speak about how they make movies. Like, if, and and uh, I, Mel Brooks did a podcast with TCM recently that I listened to. And, and uh, so it's just kind of always like catching that. When, when William Friedkin passed away, I started just hitting the button on every interview piece that he was talking about. And he was talking about um, you know, he would shoot movies that are masterpieces like French Connection or The Exorcist, and he would tell people like, "Yeah, you got one take on this one." And I'm thinking to myself, "Jesus Christ, dude! Like, that's a focus pull and half." But then I shot my short film, uh, Ancient Evil Frankencock, and I thought I told some people we, we, had, that movie. we had, we had, yeah, <laughs> I do love that movie. But we had a couple moments where it's like I don't have time for so and so, so I'm letting them out. I'm like, we're we're hitting, we're we're hitting start. We're gonna do, you know, you do it. I'll say reset. We'll do it again. We reset. We move on. Mm -hmm. And they're like, "What do you mean?" I'm like, "Dude, you got three takes. You got three tries on this, or one." And we're out of here. Almost being. Quite a point. I don't know, Mario. That's fine. Yeah. That was kind of weird. Oh no, no, that's fine. Um, yeah, okay. But so again, I'm just, just the idea of pulling from the masters that were mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. right yeah. for you, and maybe it's maybe it's just the landscape I come from. There's a lot of people from from in the Utah area that they're trying to make something that is like they'll they'll reference something that just happened last year. Mm -hmm. like, that's the movie I want to make. It's like don't make that one. Because yeah. maybe find out what they were thinking of when they made their movie and mm -hmm. you might go way back into like some avant-garde kind of a thing and deep dive down that rabbit hole and then come back out the other side, homie. Right, like, exactly. just, that's it. I mean if, if you don't have the skill set yeah. to do yeah. what they did last year, if you don't have the skill set for that, like yeah. which comes from like you know like studying the old stuff, like how how are you gonna do it, right? Then you're just kind of copying at that point. Yeah. yeah. And plagiarism is yeah. not good. No. <laughs> no. 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 But. Okay. But. But. But Joey. Yes. That's a great segue into not that, but <laughs> a great segue into uh, what you were talking about, which is always. Yes. Practicing and executing. Because building on what Brian said, it's like it's good to study, but I do know a lot of filmmakers that you know they do study a lot. Right, but they they make a film like once every seven years, and their previous film and their recent film doesn't have a lot of difference in terms of skill set or whatever. Mm -hmm. And and I think that that's the thing. Like I think when I started YouTube, you know, putting our films on YouTube, like being a filmmaker on YouTube doesn't really make a lot of sense. But what it taught me was the it it forced discipline on me. So like like having a um, having the pressure of a deadline, even though there is no deadline, like it, right. it's an abstract feeling, right? Like I, I was forced to like, you know, write a script or, or and, like shoot it and complete it. And I started, um, I started finishing it rather than perfecting it. And then uh, along the way, you know, after like a decade or something, like 
you know, I can see the growth. But yeah. so I kind of started developing this this idea where it's uh, it's quality through quantity. Yes. And you know, so for everything, and it also kind of as a filmmaker, all the scripts and all the stuff that I did that were not good, you know, I got it out there and people rejected it, people made fun of it, mm -hmm. and that's good. And like, you know, after ten years of that, like, I know what like it doesn't bother me when I do something wrong, right. right? And as opposed to somebody who just makes two films in in like ten years. And then you know one doesn't do well, and now they're like burnt out. Oh, I don't want to make a movie again. Like, dude, it's come on, you know you can do it. Yeah. Like, it's it's yeah. I, I get it. So, and that's why you know with like the uh, with the mobile you know, phones and stuff like that, filming like that shouldn't take too long because at least you get to learn. You, you get learn. to do more and yeah. in, in, yeah. in a yeah. smaller. It's it's still frame. distilled. Like you, you learn yeah. the basics of filmmaking. You know, like I said, it's it's always the besides the story, it's the the, the technical aspect. It's the shot composition shot progression right mm -hmm. then anything after that like you know you could go into but you know the editing or or, or uh, the lighting or sound or whatever like you could learn that after but like learning just how to just put something frame something uh well is is, is a skill in itself that i know directors i remember in one of our first i think it was the first episode <laughs> you were you were saying something about that where you were mm -hmm. talking about you become you geek out right on the tech mm -hmm. so many times that then all of a sudden that becomes your second layer subconsciously you know it and now you can really get to the creative part of filmmaking right because right? Right. like once you yeah because like there's there there are certain skill sets and certain techniques that is only unlocked after a certain uh gear is acquired but like the camera itself like it's already better than all the digital cameras from like 2001 right like i said i love my tvx like that's have it on an altar basically just to remind me of my my stuff but like e even then like that thing can't do what like an iphone 14 can do right like it doesn't auto focus it doesn't like if it doesn't change your f magically change your f-stop for you like what the heck you know like but but with that though like you know with the phone if you know how to look at something uh, hopefully as a filmmaker and you want to keep getting better at your craft you would have you probably have the itch to be like how can I make the shot better? Or how can I make the story better? Or how can I make the sound better? Then hopefully, then you kind of like specialize and, and that's the type of director you can become, right? Because like- um, You really develop your voice. Yeah. As a, yeah. As a filmmaker, as a director. Exactly. Yeah. Like yeah. the shots- And that's the thing yeah. to focus yeah. on. Yeah. Is the story and how you want to tell it. Right. Yeah. But and not, you know? not to be confused with what I was saying, sorry. Like it, you absolutely should continue to make movies. Every day. You should not just sit there in a dark room and just read, read, read. No, but like, yeah, both yeah, of those. You should be doing yeah, that. Because yeah, yeah. I do both. And I yeah. watch in my own films. I'm like, yeah, that sucks. And then I do something else. So, absolutely, yeah, like, I feel the same way you're yeah. saying. It's like, it's like, just quality. Yeah. quantity. Yeah. Like, I think the incentive is by like, doing. Yeah. It's like a trial by the fight, right? You know? Because it's like, only, yeah. I think it's a very, like, you have to be a project, project yeah. to, like, look at a film and, like, somehow dissect like oh my god that's yeah. that's a really cool thing and somehow automatically know a, a way or a version to execute it that's, yeah, yeah. I don't know that. well yeah. even through your through your own stuff i mean how many the the you're saying as far as um you have like terms for using type of shots but mm -hmm. you acquired that over time yeah right? exactly yeah. like you figured it out right? yeah exactly like it, it's you know simply because like i said we didn't go to film school and um you know my my crew they, they like with staff starting with staff we we're more or they were more, um, you know, like actors, like talent, right? Mm -hmm. And but I need extra people. Like, hey, I need people to help run the camera or whatnot. And then you know, they don't know anything, so I'm trying to make it as simple as yeah. possible. So it's like, oh yeah, this is a Street Fighter shot. But next thing you know, you know, the first you time, the shot. yeah. But you know, like the Street Fighter shot before, it's like, oh, there's a lot of empty space and all that. But then you know, throughout the throughout projects and projects of doing the same thing, like Steph kind of understood it, and now mm -hmm. she's my DP. Yeah. Like, and now she's manning like you know, thirty man like <laughs> teams, right? That's crazy to think. I remember the first time we filmed with her, uh, I had this other filmmaker with us, and he was like looking at her shot. He's kind of weird. He was like looking at her shot, and he like slapped her hand, like when she was like, oh. yeah, like kind of. Like, I was like, what the heck? Yeah. like it's funny. And now she's like way farther. Yeah. <laughs> he is, right? Slap his hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. yeah. So I think you know we're running out of time. So. Sure. Uh, but the, when you piece this together is. You know, you start, you get your project, you get your project in mind that you want to create, you want to make this film, right? You get started on it, um, and 
once you're starting on it, you're executing your project. Yeah, learning. Somewhere, learn the craft. But yeah. wait a minute. Yeah. But once you're executing that, you start to, your creative mind starts saying, I want to do something like this or like that. And how do I do this to make it work right? And that's when you start digging in and next thing you know, it opens up the Pandora's box almost mm -hmm. of all these options and possibilities. And literally, especially with the phone, you can start practicing how I make that yeah. shot before you actually take the phone again to make that happen. And then once you've got that, you go crowdfunding. Yeah. Right? Sure. Make yeah. sure it happens. I mean, I, I would say, like, for myself, yeah. I, I, I did about 10 years doing sketch comedy for yes. online. And, and that was really my trial, my, my film school, because yeah, I didn't go exactly. to film school either. I was a theater major. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, it, it really, I, I learned new techniques, I, you know, and then like uh, consuming as much media as possible. Like you learn, but you don't go from, well, you I'm inspired and I'm gonna crowdfund yeah. and make a feature. But I think that's <laughs> yeah. a spark. It's a yeah. spark, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're but the funny thing is, I'm sure you guys know a lot of people that have that don't do film, don't study film, yeah. and somehow like, oh, I'm gonna make a movie because they just have the means to, yeah. and they do that, and they have yeah, like, the first course. film syndrome, and it's like, oh, here's my yeah, first yeah, feature film. Yeah. It looks subpar, but they're really proud of it, and you can't help but like, yeah, dude, you know what? Yeah, feel that, feel that fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, for sure. I, yeah, I wouldn't yeah. tell anybody. No, don't do it. Yeah. But I will be weary of being on that project. Oh yeah, yeah. no, I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For some director, yeah. and I, you know, if they're sitting there and they're and they're, they're hitting all the words that I would hit, you know, <laughs> as far as like the films that they're watching and whatnot, I'm like, all right, I'm down yeah, with that. Yeah, you know, exactly. So yeah, you um, can but, go hiking barefoot, but you know. But yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm still. Sorry. I, I'm sorry, we're out of time. Oh, okay, that's fine. Um, so Ooh, I just wanted to give you guys, um, I hope this was fun. Yeah. I hope it was always, fun for you guys. Always. It's fun yeah. to actually be together. Yes. So thank you, Joey, yes. Levi, Ryan. Yep. Thank you. Thank I you, Susie. Ryan yeah. for audio uh, listeners mm -hmm. because he happened to be right here. Mm -hmm. And we've got our filmmakers coming in the door, ready for that red carpet show we're yes. going to do. And uh, we'll see you next week. Next, on, next week. Next week on the podcast. When it's released. When it released, yes. We'll see you next week on the podcast when it's released or next week when someone's listening and we're recording again. Yeah, that's fine. So, uh, thank yeah. you, guys. <laughs> now say goodbye to our listeners. Bye, guys. <laughs> It's always fun. Right. Yeah. Hey, thank you for listening. This was the entire recording from the show, uh, the episode that we recorded live in person during the International Mobile Film Festival. But I can't say thank you enough to the guys for coming out and their willingness to participate and experiment because this was our first time doing this. Of course, it may not be the last, but it was definitely at least the first time. I also want to thank all the filmmakers who submitted films, all the filmmakers whose films were selected and all the filmmakers who were able to come in person to the international mobile film festival. I'm including some links in the notes. Please go and check them out. One of them is a link to the awards so you can see who won at the film festival. Another one is for the sponsors of the film festival. And, and the other ones are what you see regularly. But also, I wanted to invite you to subscribe to the newsletter so you can receive updates directly in your email, as opposed to go looking around on social media. Um, thank you very much for everything, everyone. And Aaron. Big shout out to you. Thanks for recording this so that we could share it with our listeners wherever you may be.